J&J vaccine rollout to resume on Wednesday, SAPA recommends pregnant women not to receive the shot, and Fund gazetted to protect people injured during vaccination. These are the top coronavirus headlines from this week. We at African News Agency have been tracking the critical moments for you, and we've wrapped it up in three minutes. The Health Department has confirmed that the Johnson & Johnson Sisonke vaccination program will resume on Wednesday. The continuation of the rollout will come with a set of conditions by SAPRA, including intensified pre-vaccination assessment, post-vaccination monitoring and consent form for healthcare workers. Earlier this month, the US Food and Drug Administration recommended a pause on the issuing of the vaccine over potentially dangerous blood clotting concerns. It was initially reported that six women developed a rare clot called vaccine-induced thrombotic thrombocytopenia. However, two more have since been recorded. Ministers William Kize said they are aiming to conclude phase one of the rollout by the 16th of May and are committed to vaccinating as many of the 1.2 million healthcare workers as possible. Pregnant and lactating women should be excluded from the Sisonke protocol at this stage, according to recommendations from the South African Health Products Regulatory Authority. Minister Mkhize said that SARS Opera may have elected to err on the side of caution. The Medical Research Council and other scientific bodies will engage with SAPRA on this recommendation and scientists will be able to make the case for pregnant women to receive the vaccine. Over the weekend, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommended the COVID-19 vaccine for women who are pregnant. Preliminary data suggested that there is no evidence that the vaccine causes any form of concern for pregnant individuals or their babies. The study published last week reported data from over 35,000 women in America who were either pregnant or soon to become pregnant. A fund has been gazetted that will cover claims for people who have been injured during the administration of vaccines. The Minister of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Nkosa Zana Dlamini Zuma, gazetted the No Fault Compensation Fund last week. According to Mkhize, it's going to cost the government around 250 million rand in the first year. The fund was set up after companies providing vaccines called for the establishment of the fund. If a person reports an injury, they will need to go to their nearest health facility or visit the Department of Health's website, fill out a form and send it to an email address indicated on the form. Independent committees will then evaluate their claims and will recommend an appropriate recourse and compensation. That's three minutes. Tune in next week for another roundup of the top coronavirus stories.